Hey guys, uh, something happened on this SD card on this uh, truck that I was actually had a lot more footage on it as I was disassembling it. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> we'll go over what's going on here. This is a I don't know what year this is. Uh, it's an old cab over Freightliner, and it's got a B model cat in it. And a couple years ago, I had noticed when I'd serviced it a couple years ago for them, I used to service all their potato trucks. And I noticed that it had milky, kind of milky looking stuff in the oil, you know, and I told them, I said, you've got some kind of water intrusion, you either got liner O-rings that are leaking down into the pan, or you've got head gasket issues, or a head problem. So anyway, typical farmer, they just kept running it. Well, um, they basically hydro locked on them, and they were debating on whether to fix it or not, but the, with the current way things are and how expensive everything is they don't want to go out and buy another truck to be running around out in the field that's nicer that you know because everything's just gone through the roof with inflation so it was kind of like let's see what we've got let's get the head off see how bad it is type situation i told him i said these b model cats i said if you do there's a lot of aftermarket kits out there that are cheaper I mean, they don't run these potato trucks. It ain't like a highway truck that a guy is running every day, 10, 12 hours a day. It's it's a, it's used in the spring and the fall most of the time. And then they're parked the rest of the year. So there's no sense in going crazy and spending astronomically amounts of money on something that you're, that's us, you're using seasonally. It makes sense, right, financially. So anyway... Um, I got the turbo off, all, all the other stuff that I had previously videoed for some reason, it's gone. But air compressor removed, of course, rocker box. This one here, I pulled my head out of my butt because it's been a while since I used, to, I used to work on a lot of these. Peak engines, if you don't know what a peak engine is, uh, peak engine, this is a B model, okay? Then they had a C model. Uh, the B models, here's your injection pump. All right, fuel set off cylinder right here. Well. The rack on this is all mechanical um, that moves the helixes and back in here on the injection pump to change the fuel rate uh, coming out of the delivery valves of the pump. But on, on, a, on a peak engine, that was CAT's first attempt at an electronic engine. And basically they took a B-model CAT and they put the same pretty much injection pump pretty close to the same pump on it but they had what they called BTMs, brushless torque motors that ran the rack. And so uh, they had a computer on them. You could actually plug into that and, and communicate with the ECM on the peak engines, and you could get the codes for the brushless torque motors and stuff like that out of them. And they had a little bit different time and advance system set up up here on the front. But um, anyway, that was Cat's first attempt at a at a uh, electronic engine was the peak engine so now what we're going to do here is pull wow <clears throat> that's not supposed to be like that it should be tighter than what that is in there these are loose we'll have to make sure that, that when we go back together that that is put together correctly because those shouldn't be like that you see all that slop and play in there that's not right <clears throat> when i went to wyoming tech shoot it's been a long time ago <laughs> now um we had a, an instructor there his name was bill zweig and he was an old cat mechanic for 25 30 years and then he retired from cat and then he you know he got bored because he's been working his whole life so he went to be an instructor at wyoming tech why is that what's going on here oh dummy so you got the wrong end on it there dummy but anyway old old bill swig would get pissed at you if you called if you called the 3406 cat the original 3406, you know, well, you would think with common sense, you would think, well, if there's a 3406B, shouldn't there be a 3406A? And boy, if you called 
just a, a straight 3406, the original one, the 3406A. Boy, he would, there's no such thing as a 3406A. It's just a 3406. And I always paid heed to what he said because he worked for Cat for, you know, since like the time of Noah. And uh, so I, I don't know. So I guess I stuck with what old Bill used to say and just called the rage the original one a 3406 but you would think if there was a b there would obviously be a predecessor which would be an a but not according to him so interesting huh but these were excellent excellent engines here there's a fuel screw here on the side of the injection pump that we used to tell some of those guys, you, you, you're you supposed to set this rack up with a dial indicator. But what you would do is you would get guys for rack travel. But you would get guys that would, especially log truck drivers. Log truck drivers like to go fast. It's always a big competition to see who can melt their drive tires off the fastest. Or blow their engines up. But if you give those guys any information on how to adjust that fuel screw in their pump to control rack rack throw rack travel or they just you know they had no common sense and they just start cranking it in and then they'd go well she run pretty good for a couple days but now it's got a bunch of blow by well they these these b models you could you could turn that fuel screw and get that rack travel way up there and it'll melt holes through the piston it'll put the fuel out and yeah, when you get on it, it'll roll coal and it'll run like a bastard for a couple days. <laughs> for a couple days, anyway. up in there pretty good on these lines okay go put these up over here and then buzz these hold downs loose here pull the rocker shafts Not, I kind of have a I love for these old engines. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess we'll get the pneumatic impact wrench out. Okay, so I got my big three quarter inch drive ratchet and I thought, well, you know, we'll see if they'll break loose with that. Ah, oh, shoot. Hang on a second, damn it. I'm all disorganized here. I took the battery off the Milwaukee Impact, took it in here and put it on the charger. The, it used to have the charger right there, but the outlet's all worn out and it wouldn't stay plugged in no more. And so I took it in here to a good outlet in the office. It still ain't fully charged, but maybe I can get them broke loose with the three quarter ratchet and then zip them out with the Milwaukee three quarter gun maybe. That way I don't have to sit there. I don't have a one inch or half inch air hose hooked up. I just haven't had time to the air compressor in the shop. I don't have time to do nothing, but it just seems like go to the next wreck. But let's try this again. Fire with the old Milwaukee. I got this front one here. I got about a half or a turn on it. Okay, finally. 
And if that didn't work, I was gonna go get the four to one multiplier. I'll get her loose some way, somehow. Okay. Rods. Okay. Our bridges. I don't know. Can you stick it in there? Mm. Pull the nozzles out. That's the next thing. We'll get this back one here loose. Which neither one, none of those had come loose with the uh, impact, which tells me the head bolts. I don't know. The the long, the really long bolts like this get spongy. You know, they'll the shank on the bolt wants to twist on you instead of the actual bolt because there's so much flex in it. The longer the bolt is. Here we go. Let's see if I can bust my ass here. My one inch gonna probably take it, but I don't have an inch and an eighth socket for a you know? Huh. I actually might have one, come to think of it. I do. But oh well. But this'll this'll work for what we're doing. Uh, get them broke loose and we'll dip them out with the old They should uh, come loose now. She's being a hard ass on us. We'll be a hard ass too here. All right. Show it some tough. There you go. We'll show it some tough. All right. after come on Then what I'd like to do before I even pull the head bolts is pull the nozzles out. So that's another thing that old Bill Zweig used to really harp on us about. The difference between nozzles and injectors. So let me explain to you what I am referring to. Okay, on, let's say you got an E-model cat. What I call a low-pressure fuel system. Now, the E-model cats had a transfer pump that ran over here, kind of back where this injection pump is now. 
and the transfer pump basically sucked the fuel from the fuel tank and then sent the fuel up to the cylinder head and the internal passage in the head that went to the injectors was all low pressure the injector did all the work and made the high pressure to shoot the fuel into the combustion chamber to atomize the fuel okay this uh was something that i learned we called these not injectors we called them nozzles because the pump down here the injection pump was doing all the work this created the high pressure fuel for atomization right here so we always called these nozzles all they are is a spring and a plunger in there and they don't you know all they are is a spring and a plunger uh and and the injection pump does all the work and they're not running these off the cam like they would on a what i call a low pressure fuel system where the transfer pump push low pressure fuel this it's all basically you know the injector the pump's doing all the work on this style of fuel system if that makes any sense that's that's the way that i guess i, I learned a lot of that stuff from bill years ago because that's what he always taught us so anyway for what it's worth okay so we got to get the nozzles out of it now well some ding dong forgot the tool group at home to pull the nozzles so there's a cat 8t3139 that moves this retainer nut the spanner that goes on there and then there's a puller that pulls the nozzle out of the head and i have them but they're at home so we're gonna pull the head anyway we'll just lay it on its side so we don't damage the the uh, nozzle let me uh straps on here let's see what we got underneath this huh See if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, this is kind of looking like, huh? Interesting. 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 
what is going on here we got some dents in the top of that piston look at the fuel in there look at the fuel on top of that one hole and look at the dents the top of the piston so we need to look at cylinder number four let's go look at this head okay guys so found the problem it, it overfueled overfueled and hydrolocked that one hole see how part of the nozzle look at here's your nozzle ends right here let me get my light and point it right at that see how that nozzle is right there look at this one see how there's pieces missing to it well that's where the dents came from and you can see they kind of bounce around and hit the valves is that cracked right there see that right there can't tell if that's a crack in that head or what is going on there but it kind of looks like let's see here this is the back that's the front so it looked like cylinder number three was the one that was getting water in on it too because we'll look at that a little bit closer let's look at the head gasket that's on here I'm trying to see any evidence of where the water was getting in there hmm definitely that nozzle came apart so um <clears throat> can look at this a little bit closer too look at this side of the head gasket water was getting in there but it doesn't look like it was coming across the fire ring it wasn't pushing any of it out but water was getting in the oil so I'm really wondering I'm really, really wondering if this head's cracked in there somewhere, too. I'm looking at this cylinder. Uh, kind of a discoloration pretty good on this end down here that's a little bit different than the rest of them as well. But you can definitely tell how clean this one, that nozzle was a problem for quite a while. And it was washing that cylinder down. And I'm wondering if it, did it hydro lock it or did it wash that cylinder down with fuel and it wasn't getting lubrication and stuck that piston so i'm wondering now uh, so here's cylinder number four which is the one that we had troubles with and it kind of looks like that's probably what might have happened let me get a clean rag i think it Washed that cylinder down and stuck that piston is what it did after that nozzle failed open. Uh, and it's probably got rotten line rower rings or something like that in it. Let me get my light back on my head. Wipe this down a little bit here. Yeah, that kind of looks like that's probably what more than likely happened. We'll see if it'll turn now with that. This cylinder here sure is rusty looking. See how rusty this cylinder and maybe this one too might have been getting some water in them. They sure are rusty looking in comparison to all the rest of them. See how the black carbon here Look at all the rust here around this and around this one. It really looks like there was water getting in there. But let's see. I got a cat turning tool and you can pull the two bolt plate down there. But would it just be easier 
to just put a wrench on the crank down here. Get all the belts here off of it, maybe, and get them out of the way. Uh, should be a uh, three quarter inch bolts in that. We'll see if it'll turn over. Now, should be with the head and everything off, you should be easily be able to turn it with a half inch drive ratchet. see here guys let me get down here see if we can get on this thing and we'll see if we can roll this thing around and see what we got oh uh, what am i thinking that's what am i thinking about three quarter inch bolts here get five eighth bolts on them yeah 15 sixties She's stuck bigger than shit. <laughs> ah, she's she is stuck bigger than shit. Yeah, she is stuck. So well, I could not get it to turn with a half inch drive ratchet off the front. But I got the cat turning tool in the hole, which gives you a little bit of gear reduction there. And then I got it to turn a little bit. Let me get the damn camera over there. This damn linkage for this shift linkage. Cab over, cab over stuff. Because she's moving now. Yes. I'm suspecting that the, the number four is the problem child. So I guess what my idea maybe here is, is run it to number, what if I get an extension and get out here and then I can get more of a swing? I don't know, this thing's right in the freaking way. About ready to take it out of my way, tie it up or something. Hey, at least we got it moving, huh? Try to get number four at top dead center is my goal here. And then maybe that's way less trouble that I've got to go through to get it out. I guess I'll dump the oil too. And then I'll get underneath it. I'll wind up taking the rod caps loose on number four piston and knocking it out of there looking at it. Well, we're in the process of trying to get the pan off, but I can't get the uh, front lip of the pan. It's got a rear sump pan, of course, because it's a cab over truck. But I can't get the front lip of the pan to come past the drive gear for the oil pump, so I've got a jack between the frame and the spring to see if that's going to help me any. jack between the frame and the spring see if I could get a little bit more clearance I can't get the front lip past the uh, 
oil pump drive gear. Uh, these old cats with the three tartars on there. <clears throat> if you've never known what one is, back in here in the bell housing, there's a big, it's almost like a torque converter, but I think the missing component that differentiates itself between a torque converter is it has no, it doesn't have basically, I'm trying to remember, a turbine, I think, you know, to basically that would turn an output shaft. I think it has an impeller and a stator, but I don't think it has the turbine. <sighs> Clean this up where I don't have to lay in it. And when you're doing one of these old cats with one of these in there, it holds a lot of oil. A typical B model cat, or a C usually, that did not have a retarder on it, usually hold about nine gallons of oil. 36 quarts, but these on the other hand hold quite a bit more. I don't remember the exact capacity. I know they and the pans are really heavy on them. There it is. Okay. Some a bitch. They're heavy. <laughs> with it and I see there's quite a bit of material in that pan too uh, and I looked I pulled one piece out already and laid it on the bumper of my truck but I'm kind of curious what else do we got in here Aluminum frame flanges in it. Frame rail. Okay, so what is this? Interesting. Really thin, like. Huh. Quite a bit of it in there. What did that come from? Look at all this shit in here. Huh. Really thin, like shim material. I'm trying to think what the hell that would have come from. Huh. I am not certain about that. Well, let me clean up underneath here where I don't have to lay in that oil that's on that plywood I laid under there. I have to sop some of that shit up. It's still dripping out of the oil cooler because you got to pull the oil cooler lines come into the left front corner of the pan. You got to pull them off. So that's something that drips and never stops dripping there. I got number four out and it didn't stick the piston. But I'm looking at this bearing, this upper bearing on this rod, and I'm almost guaranteeing you now that we probably either lost the main bearing because they had water in their oil and they didn't take care of it. I warned them about it when I caught that, and they didn't take care of it, and they could have probably saved the engine if they just would have dropped a damn pan off of it and fix the water wherever the water was getting into the oil and fix the problem but that liner actually still looks pretty pretty good got good cross hatches in that liner but let's see can we see can we get under there and maybe see a discoloration somewhere on a main cap or something that would indicate a bearing failure. I don't see any discoloration on that rod cap. Not that main. I don't really see nothing there. Nothing right off anyway. I really can't see number one very well, but 
Okay, so what seems to be the issue here? Oh, you know, that's... Look at that, guys, right there. See the rust right around that? That liner o-ring has been leaking. Right there, and that's where the water's been coming from, right there. Number four cylinder. Makes you wonder... If that water was running down with number four, be our problem child. Usually, if they if they spun a bearing, you can see it. Uh, you'll you'll see one of these rod caps or main bearing caps discolored from the heat, like somebody took a rosebud to it. I mean, so far I'm not really seeing that, but. Uh, trying to figure out where the source of the hard turning engine is. I need to go a little bit further, but definitely number five liner o rings are leaking down into the oil pan. That's where the water was coming from, right there. Where's my half inch drive ratchet? Let's see if we can turn this thing a little more, maybe. on the old turning tool here. Yeah, she's still turning hard. <laughs> go the other way so I can get them two rod caps off number four or five. sure would like to find out why it's turning so hard there's got to be a bearing or something in here that's causing trouble or is there another piston hanging up I mean this one here's got quite a bit of rust and looking like shit on it is that what's causing all the issue number six does too Number five was the liner o-ring that was leaking. Not sure yet what we got going on here.
Yes. Thinking maybe it spun this bearing right here. That's exactly what happened. Okay, it spun the bearing on number number five where the water was leaking down in the pan. There's the source of our problems right there. Okay, let's spun the bearing on number five, guys. He's probably not going to want to fix this thing. So I might call those guys out there at that other ranch. I know there's a good B model sitting out there. But right there, it spun number five, the same cylinder. So what was happening, the water was running down, running down, right down into the bearing is what it was doing. And it, yeah, it screwed the crank up, spun the bearing. Okay, so I'm going to quit right now because I got a feeling that he's going to not going to want to fix this. But a lot of work for that, I guess. I was under the impression that it hydraulic is what they told me. That's why we pulled the head on it. You know, I didn't have complete information, but, you know, a lot of work to find out that it's not a bearing.